Hi everyone, my name is Alon Yogev. This is joint work with Iran Komorgotsky, somewhere here in the audience. Here. And this will be about distributional collision resistant hash. Uh, so let's start with a quote uh, of Bellara and Rogaway, ask less of a hash function and it is less likely to disappoint you. Um, so what security definition do we want from our hash function? So this depends on the application. We have many different uh, applications and sometimes you can settle for uh, less secure, uh, for, for weaker definitions of, uh, of security and that's uh, of course better. So we have uh, all sorts of security definitions. Maybe the most standard one is, this, is a CRH, a collision resistant hash. And uh, we also have uh, a, a, a more weaker uh, a security definition, universal one-way hash functions, and also recently introduced the notion of multi-collision resistant hash, and I'll talk about a bit about the differences uh, about these definitions. So what is a collision resistant hash? So I have a family of functions, okay? And each member of this family is, uh, is uh, efficient and it's easy to sample uh, a function from this family. And uh, every function in this family is compressing. So for this talk, let's just assume it compresses two n bits to n bits. Uh, and then we have the security definition. And this is modeled by a game. And in this game, we have a, a challenger and an adversary. The challenger picks a random function h from the family, sends it to the adversary, and the adversary, the, the goal of the adversary is to find x1 and x2 that of course are different but collide under h. And we say that the CRH is secure if no polynomial time adversary can find such a collision with a good probability. Okay, what is a universal one-way hash function introduced by Nor and Young? Uh, here this, uh, it's the same setting of a uh, family of hash functions that are efficient and compressed. The security game is a bit different. Here the challenger picks H and he also picks a random element X1. And now the goal of the adversary is uh, to find X2, that is of course different than X1, that collide under H. So this is a much harder task for the adversary. He cannot control X1, he gets X1 and he only can control X2. And because the task is uh, harder, so this is actually a weaker primitive, this is a weaker security notion. Uh, in a recent work with uh, Komogotsky and Naor, we introduced the notion of multi-collision resistant hash. And here again, it's the same setting, except that now the task of the adversary is to find a K collision, a K-way collision. So this is a tuple X1 to XK that are all distinct but all the, uh, but they hash to the same value. Okay, so these are not k pairs that collide. These are k distinct elements that have the same value under the hash function. So these are three definitions of hash functions. I sum them up in this slide. One-way function is the weakest uh, form of the three and uh, it was shown to be sufficient for things like the hash and sign uh, paradigm and we know how to construct them for, uh, for many one-way functions. Uh, CRH, collision resistant hash, we have many different assumptions that we know how to build CRH from, LWE, discrete log, factoring, and more. And recently, the notion of MCRH has been shown to, uh, that uh, we can construct it under even uh, weaker assumptions than CRH, for example, uh, some notion of entropy approximation. And also in recent works, it's shown that this notion, uh, uh, even though that it's much weaker than a CRH, uh, it's still useful for many applications. Okay, let me just take a, a sip. Okay. So you have these three definitions and you can use each for the appropriate uh, um, uh, construction. And now I wanna, if this wasn't confusing enough, I wanna talk about another definition. So this is distributional collision resistant hash. This was in, introduced by Dubrov and uh, Ishak. And um, here the setting is the same, only the security game is different. The challenger is sending a random H in the family, 
And now the task of the, adver the adversary is not to find any arbitrary collision, but actually he has to find a random collision. Okay, so it has to be much stronger. The task is much harder for the adversary. What is a random collision? Okay, so think of the following process. I just sample a random element x1 in my domain, and now I'm gonna sample x2 that conditioned on x2 being a, a collision with x1. So it's gonna be uniform in the pre-image of h of x1. Okay, and this I'm gonna call this, this is a random collision. And then I'm gonna output x1 and x2. So this is a random variable, collision h. And now my security requirement is that the, the statistical distance uh, between the, the collision that the adversary outputs and this uh, random variable is very small to some negligible function epsilon. Okay, so you can forget about the precise definition, but just going back to this, you remember that the task of the adversary is to find a random collision, not an arbitrary collision. So a few fun facts about distributional collision resistant hash, DCRH. So as I said, they were introduced by Dubov and Ishai. Uh, they introduced it in the context of uh, efficient sampling. They had this win-win uh, result that either DCRH exists or something regarding to the complexity efficient sampling uh, holds. Uh, I'm not gonna describe it there and now, but it's very interesting. Um, I wanna note that these distributional collision resistant hash functions are a very weak primitive. Okay, so if you give the adversary this function h, he might be able to find all the collisions under h, and still this doesn't break the security of, of our object. Okay, as long as he can find the collision in some skewed distribution, not the uniform one. So the security only says that he cannot find a random collision according to the, the uniform distribution I uh, defined. Um, these are the analog of a distributional one-way function, if you heard of them, uh, where in a one-way function, the task is to invert the function and find some pre-image. Pre a distributional one-way function, the task is to find a random pre-image. And in Pagliaccio and Luby actually showed that for one-way functions, they are equivalent, ex existentially equivalent. But this seems unlikely in the case of uh, CRH. And last fun fact, uh, the DCRH are actually black box separated from one-way permutations, even uh, if you put along obfuscation. So actually all the black box results that uh, separate uh, CRH from one-way permutation, if you just look at the proof, they actually separate uh, one-way permutation from distributional collision resistant hash. So really just the proof as is works for DCRH and not only CRH. Okay, what are our results? We give two constructions of distributional CRH. One is black box, one is not. One is efficient, one is really not. And one is explicit and one is not. Uh, what we're gonna show today, I hope, is the one that is not. <laughs> um, so this is really a more theoretical result. It has nothing, it's really not practical in any, in any means, uh, but just, to see the, the, how to compare these uh, objects with others. So the first result is a construction of DCRH from this notion I told you about called the multi-collision resistant hash. So the, we give a non-black box construction of a DCRH from any K MCRH for any constant KK is the parameter of the size of the tuple you need to find. Okay, so a two MCRH is just CRH, and, but you can set k to be three or four or five or any constant. So the proof is not constructive, as we'll see in a minute, and it uses the adversary in a non-black box way. It doesn't really yield a full DCRH, it's only infinitely often for infinite many ends, but let's forget about this for now. And this partially resolved an open question by uh, Berman et al. The second result, uh, we give a uh, this is a real construction, explicit black box, uh, where the assumption is the average case hardness of SDK statistical zero knowledge. Uh, 
just two fun facts on this. So previously, the hardness of statistical zero knowledge, we didn't know how to build any form of, uh, of hashing, except that it implies one-way functions, which is equivalent to the notion of a universal one-way hash functions. And another corollary that we get is that since we already know that obfuscation and one-way permutations cannot imply in a black box manner CRH, collision resistant hash, and as I said, this implies, this applies also for distributional collision resistant hash, we get that IO plus one-way permutation doesn't imply the hardness of statistical zero knowledge, okay, because otherwise we would get IO plus one-way permutation, we'll get statistical zero knowledge, and from that we can build a DCRH which contradicts this, this thing. So this was already known in a paper by Bitansky et al, but it's very nice that we get it as a color of uh, our construction. Okay, so let's try to put a result on a map. So we have collision resistant hash up here and one-way functions down here. And uh, uh, multi-collision resistance is the weaker notion. And these two things are uh, uh, black box separated. And in the paper on MCRH, we also saw the black box separation of MCRH from standard CRH. And MCRH are also black box separated for one-way functions and imply one-way functions. So we can remove this. As I said, we can build MCRH from this notion called entropy approximation, which implies it's a stronger assumption than SDK that implies one-way function. And now we can put distributional CRH back on the picture. And this is, of course, a weaker notion than CRH. And we show that it implies one-way functions. And it's, as I said, it's black box separated from one-way functions. And so also this black box separation applies here. And then our first construction is actually a non-black box construction of MCRH from DCRH, even though they are separated in a black box model. And the second construction is uh, we build DCRH from SCK. Okay, so let's jump to uh, the proof. So I'll show you the proof, assuming I have a three MCRH. So I have a hash function where adversaries cannot find a three tuple that collide. And I want to build a DCRH, meaning a hash function where it's hard to find a random tuple that collide. So let's just assume H is my MCRH family. Okay, and it compresses two n bits, two n bits. And let's assume that DCRH do not exist. Okay, DCRH do not exist, meaning I have an adversary A that can find a, a random collision under, uh, under H. Uh, and just an easy fact, the size of pre-image of a random, for a random X, the size of pre-image should be very large because uh, hash compresses enough. So of course I can run A on this hash function H and get a random collision X1, X2. And I can run it again and get another collision X3, X4. Okay, but this won't be a, a three tuple Okay, because X3 and X4 are gonna collide to a different value than X1, X2, okay, because this is a random collision. Somehow I need to make the adversary sample X1, X2, that's great, and then make him sample another collision conditioned on uh, colliding with the first one. Okay, but this is of course, in general, impossible to run an algorithm conditioned on some uh, probability. So let's see what we do. We're going to define a new hash family, H prime. This hash family is going to depend on our MCRH H and also on the adversary A. Okay, so A, H, H prime is going to get as an input X and it's going to interpret X as random coins to run the adversary A. Okay, so I'm going to give the definition, just some small notation here. A1 is exactly the adversary A that outputs a tuple only. I'm looking only at the left part, at X1. Okay, so this is exactly A, just, just I'm taking only the left part. And now the definition is as follow. So what is this new hash function H prime? So now I'm gonna write this as a R. This is the input. It takes this input, uses it to run the adversary A, with the original hash function H. 
this outputs two elements, x1, x2. I'm taking only the left one, x1. And I'm running h on this left one. And that is my final output. OK, so this is a new family, h prime. And I guess this might be a bit confusing at this point. So let's just see it again with a picture. So this is the same construction. OK, this is the code of the construction. So I'm going to, the, the input is r. And r is l bits, where l is the amount of random coins that the adversary A uses. OK, so I don't know how much he uses. It's some polynomially many. And this, I call this l. And then I run, I use this. I run A, and I get a tuple x1, x2. But I'm taking only the left side. OK, so this would be x1. And then I'm applying my h here, and I'm getting y. So this is the construction of h prime. Now, what can we do? So we assume that distributional collision resistant hash do not exist. So there's another adversary, a prime, that can break h prime as a distributional collision resistant hash. OK, so now we're going to use a prime and a in order to find a three collision with respect to our original hash function h. So this is what we do. So how does the algorithm work? It gets h as an input. It defines h prime. OK, this is just a notation. OK, this is we define the hash from function h prime. Then we're going to run a prime, OK, the adversary for h prime. And it will find two random strings, r1 and r2, that collide under h prime. We're going to use the first one. We're going to run a. We're going to get two elements, x1 and x2. These elements are going to collide under h. OK, this is easy. This we could do to begin with. You just run the adversary on a random string. It will get you a random collision. But now we have this other value, r2. So this is another random string. Note that r2 is not really a random string, OK? r1 is a random string. And this is only a random string conditioned on colliding with r1 under h prime. So it's not a random string. It's some arbitrary string. So I don't really know what happens when I run a on this arbitrary string. But I run it. It outputs x3 and x4. And then my final output is x1, x2, x3. And now I claim that these three elements are going to be a, a collision under h. OK. So I need to prove two things. I need to prove that they collide under h and they're, that they're distinct. Uh, so the fact that they collide is actually easier. So, um, so we know that a is going to succeed with high probability. Uh, OK, so h of x1 is going to equal h of x2. And then we know that r2 is sampled to collide with, uh, with r1 under h prime. So just if you write this as definition, you get this equation that h, when the adversary with this random coins and with this random coins collide, which is exactly means that h of x1 equals h of x3. Because this is, the output of this is x1, the output of this is x3, and we have that the hashes are the same. So actually, we have that the three uh, collide. Note that I don't know anything about h of x4. Okay, I don't know that it's uh, actually a collision with, uh, with h of x3. Okay, now I want to claim that the three are, uh, are distinct. Uh, so here I'm going to use, so the first fact is that uh, since r1 was uniform, then what we got here is actually a random collision. So x1 and x2 are random, and the probability of them being the same is very, very small. OK, this is again because we said the set of pre-image is very large. The hard part is to show why is x3 different than x1 and x2. OK, why is this element must be different than x1 and x2? Because r2 wasn't a random string. So we're going to go back to the drawing of the construction. So again, a1 is the adversary that takes random coins and then outputs some x. This is the left side. And then we take this x, and we have the y. And now we look at all the pre-image of y. 
And for each element in the pre-image, we look at R of x1, which is all the random coins that make A output the element x1. Okay, and these are all the random coins that make A output the element x2, and all these are elements that go to y. Okay, and the probability that x3 equals x1, okay, and you can do the same for x2, just to show you that x3 is different than x1, is the probability that the random string R2 must be one of the random strings here. Okay, this is just means that it will output x1. So now I need to look at this mapping, okay? How does A act as a mapping between these two sets? Because A is an adversary for a DCRH, the way it maps randomness to elements is very nice because it outputs a uniform distribution of collisions. So this is not an arbitrary mapping, but we have that roughly this size, Rx1, is equal to Rx2 because the probability of X1 is, this is, a, a uniform element, so probability of x1 equals the probability of x2. So the number of random coins leading to x1 needs to be proportional to the number of random coins leading to x2. Okay, so we have here. And now we know that R2 is a random string of length n conditioned on ha being, a, being a collision with R1, meaning it's either from this bubble here or maybe this bubble or any bubble that leads to one of these sets in, in uh, the, the pre-images of, uh, of Y. Okay, so, and, uh, and this is a large set. So we have exponentially many such big bubbles and the probability of R2 being in any specific one of them uh, is equal because it's a random string conditioned on being in one of the bubbles that lead to an element here. Uh, so the probability of it being just uh, exactly in Rx1 is equal to the probability of Rx2, and such we have many, this probability is very small. So what, what we get is that X3 is gonna be different, this probability is very, very small. And X3 is gonna be different than X1, and the same holds for, for X2. So I know this is a bit complicated, but really this is the whole proof. And this is, was for a three MCRH. Okay, what happens if I want to prove for a four MCRH? So remember, already the proof broke down for four because I, I didn't know what to do with uh, X4. But if you look, what we did, we said that, okay, if A can find a random collision, then this new algorithm that we built can find a three-way collision. And actually, the way the proof worked is by showing that we found a random three-way collision. That's why they were all distinct, because they're actually random elements uh, conditioned on colliding. So now we can uh, do this recursively, and we can use this algorithm as our starting point that finds a three random collision and construct a new algorithm that finds a random four collision. Okay, this is gonna be really the, the exact same way, and you can do this from K to K plus one. So this works, and you have a, a major blow up in the, the running time of the construction and everything, so you can apply it for any constant K, but uh, not more. Okay. So again, this is the summary of, uh, of our construction. And just to end with an open problem, so we've shown that MCRH implies a distributional CRH. What about going from distributional CRH to CRH, as in the one-way function uh, case. So we don't know of any construction and also we could not be able to show a black box uh, separation. So both uh, positive or negative result here would be uh, interesting. Uh, okay, thank you.